okay my dear children now in the earlier chapters we discussed about the structures of a urinary system we dis discussed about the kidney and the structure of the kidney production of urine expelling of urine all of these con all of these contents now in this chapter we'll be discussing mainly about the diseases associated with the urinary system so under that we'll be specially discussing about kidney diseases right we'll be specially discussing about the kidney diseases right my dear children so first of all the first kidney disease is given to you in here so this is referred as the kidney stones right however before we are coming into kidney stones let's see what are the diseases how how these diseases are going to uh, occur in our body so it's given that if the kidneys are damaged upon damage in to kidneys the process of the ex process of excretion does not uh, happen the way they should some examples of kidney diseases and the reasons are given below so my dear children if the ki kidneys are going to damage right then those will not once again regenerate to the original state each and every body organ within our right, with each and every organ within our body they have an ability to heal i mean like they have an ability to regenerate their cells once again right if you take our hairs right if you take our hair when you cut hair it will regrow and if you cut your fingernails once again they will regrow right so like that way if you take our body our body has up to a certain level we can our some body parts or tissues are going to regrow up to a certain level only right if you remove your hands or if you are cut if you cut your hands entirely to get removed by a, get removed or get removed with a piece right then those th areas will not regrow once again but however up to a certain level right your bodies are going to regrow or regenerate their cells but in a kidney we can't observe these process if the kidney is going to fail due to a certain uh, problem or due to a certain uh, failure then there is no regeneration in cells so in that case we have to either dialyze our blood or else we have to transplant a kidney from a different person so we'll be discussing about these things when you are going further with the lesson part under the kidney diseases so first of all let's see the first disease associated with our kidneys right so the first disease associated with the kidneys is given kidney stones salts such as calcium oxalate calcium oxalate this is the main salt which is going to cause this kidney stones actually kidney stones means my dear children within the kidney there are stones stones means here salt crystals there are salt crystals contained within the kidneys like this so here you can see so these are those structures stones which present within the kidney so whole kidney is going to damage and the filtration process is going to fail right filtration process is going to fail so if the filtration process is going to fail the production of urine is going to be reduced and there is going to be a huge pain in the abdomen area right due to these stones and this uh, and the expelling of uh, these waste materials and the urine process will get delayed sometimes these stones can be observed in even in the bladder even in the urinary bladder so in that case expelling out of urine from the body will be get so difficult 
if the stones are found in the urine urinary bladder right so my dear children here it is given that salts such as calcium oxalate deposit in kidneys and form crystalline structures so it's going to form crystalline structures these so uh, these calcium oxalate crystals are going to deposit or it's going to crystalline within the body right within the kidneys within the bladder and to create stone like structures so these stone like structures are referred as kidney stones or bladder stones so these structures are known as kidney stones right so these structures are the ones which are referred as kidney stones okay so you are given with a empty slide under the topic reasons for kidney stones so my dear children what is the main what, what are the reasons so here we are especially discussing about the reasons why does the kidney stones are going to occur within a person and how does it's going to occur what are the main reasons right what are the main causative things that lead to having kidney disease that will lead to have kidney diseases so my dear children you know that these conditions or these conditions means either kidney stones or bladder stones are getting created due to depositing salts right when the salts are not getting removed fr uh, from the body, right? When the salts are not getting removed from the body, body means uh, from the uh, urinary bladder or else from the kidney. If these substances are not getting removed, right? Then in that case, the concentration of the salts will get increased and they will deposit within the kidney or else in the bladder, right? Their concentration would get increased and they will definitely deposit within the bladder or the kidney. Concentration means the number of particles contained within the unit volume. If you take unit volume of a urine, I mean like one, if you take one milliliter of urine, it has certain amount of water. So when the concentration of the salt is getting increased, when the number of particles of salts is, is getting increased, gradually those salts are not getting dissolved within the solution. They are going to they're going to suspend within the solution as a solid. So, my dear children, having lots of lots of salts within the blood is a main reason to have kidney stones. Because upon the filtration of blood, these salts are getting accumulated within the kidney or in the bladder and therefore it may lead to condi a condition called the kidney diseases or the kidney stones. So first and foremost thing to do is we should not eat or we have to minimize the consumption of salty foods, high salty foods. Up to a certain level, we need salts, right? Otherwise, we can't survive because there are some components or there are some minerals and chemicals which are essential for our body, which are contained in salts. However, we have to take salts up to a certain level, up to an optimum level, okay? So, consumption of high salty foods is a reason for having kidney stones, right? High salty, right? More salt, foods with more salt, okay? So, we have to eat food that has some amount of salt, not more, not less, okay? So, the main reason for having kidney disease is number one, having food with plenty of salt plenty of salts 
so having food with plenty of salts is a main reason to have kidney disease right here the kidney disease is kidney stones actually number two so mainly i told you that kidney stones will occur if the concentration of the salt is getting increased within the bladder or the kidney right so in order to increase the concentration there can be two possibilities number one increase in the amount of salt dissolved within the kidney or the bladder right so that's the first case so under that we we have written down that this thing if you consume food with plenty of salt then those excess salt will get collected within the kidney and then finally they will crystallize they will crystallize and to form kidney stones okay so that's the first one second way of creating these ones would be if a person is not going to urinate at a proper time when when it is needed we have to urinate if you are going to keep urine for a longer time period in that case also the concentration of salt would increase as there are a large amount of urine getting collected within your body within the bladder or kidney so there might be a chance in crystalline in these substances if you are not going to urinate within the proper time so when needed it's important to urinate and remove our excretory substances from the body right so not passing urine at the proper time at proper times or when needed is also subjecting or it's also giving kidney stones to people right giving kidney stones to people right so we can write next one not passing urine when needed not pass in urine when needed so when when we need to pass urine we have to expel it we have to eliminate it because urine is a waste it's not to collect waste substances more and more within the body okay so when needed we have to pass and remove those substances then my dear children if a person is not drinking enough water if a person is not drinking enough water then that person will not be able to dissolve enough salt in urine because you know that 96% of urine is made up with water so if there is no enough water then there is more salts in it there then there would be more salts in it more salts less water so if there is more salt with less less water definitely salts will get crystallized okay definitely salt will get crystallized right that's how even we produce that's that's how even we produce salt in our day to day life in a salt turn we take sea water and we are allowing water to evaporate so by that way we can collect finally salt at the bottom it's because that when expelling or when get when water is getting removed the solute or the substance which has been dissolved within the water it's going to remain within the bottom so this process is also going to happen if you don't drink enough water if there is less amount of water within the kidneys then my dear children there is a possibility of having kidney stones because of less amount of solvent because of having less amount of solvent so we can write like this number 3 right not drinking not drinking enough water not drinking enough 
water. So these are the three main reasons, right? Three main reasons which will lead to which will lead to create kidney stones in bladder or else in our kidneys. So it's important to avoid these things in order to have a healthy pair of kidneys and a urinary system, right? Okay then. So the next kidney disease is given. Number two, kidney failure, right? Kidney failure. Functioning of kidneys get disordered and it is called the kidney failure. So here the function is getting disordered. I mean like here uh, they mean like the function of the fil fil filtration function of the kidneys is not going to work. Right? Filtration process is not going to work at all. It's going to break down due to a certain problem. It can be an any prob it can be any problem. Even the genetical problems may come, right? If you come into contact with different poisonous substances, your kidneys will fail. If you come into contact with different chemical substances, toxic chemical substances, definitely kidneys will fail. Like that way, there can be several instances or several examples, several factors which contributes for the kidney failure. Okay? So we'll be discussing those things as well. So however, here the in a kidney failure, the kidney is not going to work or it's not going to function properly. Filtration process or the filtration ability of the kidneys now being lost. Okay. So that condition is referred as the kidney failure. So my dear children, due to reasons mentioned below, kidney failure may occur. So due to these reasons, kidney failure could occur. So here it is given the first one entering heavy metals and toxic chemicals into the body. Heavy metals are the substances or the metals which are very heavy or which are high in density. Okay. Those are the substances, actually not the substances, metals. Right. Those are the metals that are very heavy in nature or that has high density. A good example is mercury. Okay, good example is mercury. When mercury is getting entered to our system or when it is getting entered to our body, mercury has a dense nature. It's the densest material or the liquid that we can observe in our nature, right? For an example, if you take one milliliter of, if you take one milliliter, just one milliliter of water, the mass of one milliliter of water is nearly one gram. Nearly one gram. If you take one milliliter of mercury, one milliliter of mercury, okay, it's about 13.6 grams. It's about 13.6 grams. So if you take the mass of mercury relative to the mass of water, mass of mercury is it's about 14 times greater than the mass of water. If you compare it with the volume, 1 milliliter of water is about 1 gram while 1 milliliter of mercury is about 13.6 grams in mass. So that's why these, these materials are referred as heavy metals, my dear children. They have a high mass compared with the volume. In simple, they have high density, right? Heavy metals. So when heavy metals are going to enter to our body, they're going to deposit within the kidneys as they have a greater mass. And that function inability or the filtration ability of the kidneys is going to, that, that's function ability or the uh, filtration ability of the kidney is going to reduce gradually because of those substances. Those, go, so those substances are going to stuck within the kidneys as they have higher mass and higher densities. So my dear children, in that kind of a case, 
the filtration process is getting interrupted or it's getting stopped so that in that case the kidney failure will occur right in that case the kidney failure will occur so that's how heavy metals are affecting the process of urine filtration and the process of kidneys okay in the second one it's given suffering from diabetes for a long time so i told you in the earlier case if you take an unhealthy person like a person who is suffering from di from diabetes right during the filtration process of urine i told you there can't be any sub there can't be any substance rather than urea uric acid water and salts but however in a di in diabetes patients some amount of glucose is getting removed with the urine it's because of incomplete or incomplete filtration it's because of the incomplete filtration process that's going to occur within the kidneys their reabsorption ability is getting reduced so glucose is also getting removed with the urine so in when uh, this is going to happen for a longer time period the kidneys are going to fail at a one instance so if a patient is suffering from diabetes it's important to control diabetes conditions right it's important to have healthy foods right that do not provide you with large amount of glucose or sugars so we have to avoid sweets okay if a patient is suffering from diabetes he or she should have to control the glucose level very well otherwise your kidneys will get or otherwise you are there is a possibility that your kidneys will get fail on a certain day so it's important to protect your kidneys right it's important very important to protect your kidneys okay right so the next one is given number 3 third reason using drugs for a long time period for a certain disease for for certain diseases if you take diseases like cholesterol high amount of cholesterol in blood if you take diseases like high blood pressure right if you take diseases like diabetes over here there can be other diseases as well however now these conditions these diseases we can't cure it for 100% no there can be certain situations these where these levels might increase so in that case you have to consume medication for a long time period like 5 to 10 years probably even more than 10 years like for a lifetime you have to consume medication my dear children now if you take our normal medi medicine these medicines some medicines have different types of side effects side effect means now sometimes when you drink some uh, med special medicines that's are being prescribed for a special kind of a disease right let's imagine that i have called now i'm going to consume the medication given by the doctor to me when i'm going to consume after some time i feel dizziness right i may feel a dizziness it's because of the medication that i took so the diseases the other diseases caused when you are consuming these drugs or these medication are referred as side defects sometimes headaches may come sometimes the dizziness sometimes the nausea right sometimes the vomiting so like that way there can be different types of side effects when you are using different types of medication so if you use these medications for very long time period all of these medications all of the chemical substances are getting filtered mainly by the kidneys so there is a high possibility high risk in failing kidneys due to these say, chemical substances which been used for a longer time period so my dear children it's important to it's very important okay it's very important to control our disease conditions right by ourselves we have to control now you know that diabetes is a condition that we can control if we avoid sweets we can control diabetes up to a certain level same thing as the pressure same thing goes for the pressure as well high blood pressure we can control it 
we should uh, we can have we can have a calm life okay without mental stress okay so by that way we can up to a certain level we can control but however if a person is going to consume medication for a longer time period then that person would have a greater opportunity greater probability in getting these kidney stones because of those medicines and their extra or side effects right then next one is given smoking and taking liquor so smoking and taking liquor is going to give out heavy disease conditions within our body it's going to affect for each and every system contained within our body right you know all of these stuff right already you know this now if you take smoking if a person is going to smoke not the lungs not the respiratory not the respiratory system which is going to affect even that's the main or system which is going to affect however it's going to increase your blood it is going to increase your blood pressure right in a patient it's going to increase right all the other factors right balanced factors then after that your skin will, will get wrinkled and you might get a older look okay and uh, the processors which is going to carry out by skin is going to reduce from time to time like that way there are several complications now it's going to affect for the kidneys as well so my dear children it's important to avoid from liquor and quit from smoking in order to have a good healthy lifestyle okay it's really important to quit from smoking plus by having alcohol if you do not consume if a person is not consuming these things then there is a greater possibility to have a healthy life okay so these are the main reasons that will cause kidney failure okay so after a kidney failure what's going to happen after a kidney failure what's going to happen there can be two possibilities number one we can use medications and we can uh, repair our kidney okay by using medications if the kidney is failed totally then we have to filter our blood by using a special machine we have to connect ourselves to that machine and we have to filter our blood through the machine that process is called as dialysis filtration of blood by using a special machine okay that is called as dialysis so during the dialysis process the same thing or the same function which is going to carry out by kidney is getting completed by a different electronic machine so that's the dialysing machine okay my dear children so yeah now according to the amount of toxic substances getting collected within the body of a certain person the times that we need to dialyze for a certain month will get changed even for weeks there are even there are some patients in our country like for a week 3 or 5 days he or she should have to visit to the hospital and should dialyze for a week 3 or 4 5 days right so that's a severe condition of kidney failure if this dialysis process is going is going to continue on a dial now the thing is that dialysis process is a much expensive method now in general hospitals normally they are not charging but however if you visit for a private hospital the charge or the cost will be really high so they are for my dear children it's not a good convenient method right 
it's not a long term method it's good for a short term but it's not a long term protection method it's because that we have to travel like five or six days sometimes within a week to dialyze so we have to travel so it's not a convenient method so there is another solution kidney transplant kidney transplant means here a suitable kidney is selected from a certain donor and it's been taken out from the from the donor and been planted to the patient so by that way the patient would have an ability to survive somewhat longer time so like that way there are several remedies for a kidney failure however those remedies are very difficult right those remedies are very difficult and it will cost of too it will it will cost too much of money right so it's really important to protect our kidneys very well right so it's really important to protect our kidneys right then so we'll move on with the next thing to observe our other contents right then the next one is given kidney infection right next condition is the kidney infection kidney infection means here the kidneys might get infected by a microorganism or any other parasitic organism so by that way complications may occur so these complications can be once again controlled or we can avoid these complications by eliminating the certain parasitic organism from our body using medication or any other vaccines or whatever a remedy right so kidney infection means the urethra can be infected by microorganisms and it may cause kidney damage okay so due to microorganism this kidney uh, what the kidney infection may occur right however these can be once again we can uh, these conditions can be once again uh, these con uh, however these conditions we can eliminate these conditions by using a certain medication okay so my dear children so these are the three main types of kidney diseases that we can observe right so it is given that here excretory process should be carried out efficiently in the body it should be carried out efficiently right mean like if you want to remove these exp uh, these excretory materials then we have to remove it so it should be carried out more efficiently for this purpose maintaining healthy kidneys is important now for this purpose uh, for this process or for this purpose we have to have a pair of good and healthy kidneys not the kidneys but also we have to have a good urinary system as well so we should have to have a good urinary system plus a two pair of good and healthy kidneys so now let's investigate what are the ways right what are the tips that we can follow in order to have a healthy and a good urinary urinary system right so you are given with tips that should be followed to maintain healthy kidneys okay number 1 drinking enough pure water daily so it's important to drink enough water daily right according to the body mass index body mass index means when you divide uh, you are when you take the ratio between your height and your mass there is a certain index which is called as the body mass index so according to that the amount of water which needed for the body is being calculated for, uh, if you take a normal healthy person like they are, we have to drink according to the B, according to the bmi or the body mass index these values are going to change so however for a healthy person it should we should uh, for a healthy normal person it's it's important to use at least 3 liters 3 to 5 liters of water within a day right 
this va these values are going to increase or decrease according to the BMI value or the body mass index value. However, we have to consume at least 3 to 5 liters of water, pure water daily. Right? By consuming water, you are minimizing the risk of having kidney stones and kidney failures. Okay? Especially kidney stones. So, it's important to drink enough water daily. Pure water. Right? Daily. So, next one. Limit consuming too much salty and sour foods like pickle, lime pickle and food with vinegar. So, it's important to stop. Actually, it's not stop, right? It's not stopping. We have to minimize the usage of pickle foods, sour foods, right? And salty foods, right? So, it's important to stop, the, not to stop, but to at least minimize these things. If you can stop, then it is very good, right? Then it is a brilliant condition if you can stop. But however, at least up to a certain level, we have to minimize the consumption because too much salty foods will cause you kidney stones. There is a possibility, there is a higher probability in creating, in having kidney stones. So my dear children, it's important to have or to minimize the consumption of salty and sour foods. Okay. Because sour foods contain different types of acids, right? So, during when these acids are going to mix up with the chemical substances within our stomach, there is a possibility in creating salts, like in the neutralization reactions, like we discussed in the earlier chapter. So, there is a possibility in creating different types of salts, okay? So, it's important to avoid or to minimize the uh, consumption of salty or sour foods. Then next one, quit smoking and liquor. I told you or I explained what is going to happen during the process or the, when you are using liquor and if a person is going to smoke. So it's important to stop these two factors as well, right? Not to maintain good urinary system or good, uh, do not to have good kidneys, but to have a whole heap of to avoid a whole heap of diseases, to have very good systems, organ systems. It's going to affect not even, not the urinary system, but to all the systems in our body. So it's important to avoid from these two bad habits, smoking and consumption of liquor. So in order to have good kidneys, we have to quit from smoking and quit from using liquor. Next one, there is a risk of kidney failure for the persons who suffer from diabetes. Therefore, it is important to control the blood sugar levels. So, my dear children, the next thing is it's really important to control our blood sugar levels. If a certain person is filling with diabetes, it's really important to control the diabetes because you, I told you that if a person is having severe condition of diabetes, then with the urine, glucose may pass. So, upon passing glucose, your kidneys get damaged, right? So, there is a high possibility in having kidney failure among the people who have, who have uh, diabetes, okay? And the other thing is that if a person is failing with diabetes, if we are not going to control that condition, like if we are not going to, like if we are not going to minimize the usage of sweets, in that case, he or she have to drink more and more medications, more and more medicines. So in that case also, there is a possibility in having kidney failure. So in the earlier cases, we discussed that having medication for a longer time period is not good for your kidneys. So we have to minimize the medication, right? Minimizing means not, it's not not taking at all, right? But we have to take it. If there is a certain disease, right? Is there, if there is a certain disease condition, if there is a certain infection, right? At the moment, if you are suffering from any kind of a disease, you have to take medicine and you have to recover first, 
this is not just this is not talking about this is not talking about acute condition right i'm talking about chronic conditions chronic conditions means it has a history right like for longer time period if a person is suffering from a uh, certain disease then those diseases are chronic diseases acute diseases means like when you are working nearby uh, from a person who is suffering from cold in the later day you are going to catch up with cold so that condition is called an acute condition suddenly you are having a certain um, type of a disease an acute condition so in acute conditions we have to get medications for sure and we have to we have to uh, heal it heal the disease however that is not the condition with a chronic disease chronic disease is having the disease for a longer time period so in that in that kind of a situation we have to consume and consume medication for a longer time period okay so in that case there is a high risk of having kidney failure because all of these stuffs are getting filtered from your kidney right so my dear children there is a risk of kidney failure for the persons who suffer from diabetes therefore it is important to control blood sugar levels then next one given if a person takes medications regularly over a prolonged period he should take them to the prescribed dosage by the physician and should have regular test to check the kidney functions so i told you in the earlier case also if a person is suffering from a chronic disease it's important to check our kidneys at least once a year okay and to check whether the kidneys are functioning well or not because there is a high possibility in having kidney failure among the people who use different types of medication for chronic diseases right then the next one one should concern about the cleanliness of the surrounding area of the urethra because this area can be infected very easily so we should have a good hygiene we should have a good cleanliness in our body otherwise there is a possibility of getting infections especially with the area of urethra because it's going to catch up with bacteria very quickly right so there is a possibility there is a possibility of getting an infection it's because right urethra and the area is very sensitive area and it's not 100% covered so there is a possibility that your kidneys may fail because there is a possibility that microorganisms or other parasitic organisms have a chance to enter to your urinary system through the urethra and your kidneys will get infected by that way there should there can be a possibility of kidney failure or any other disease so my dear children it's important to keep your cleanliness or hygiene right in the body we have to keep our health uh, we have to keep our cleanliness especially in the area with urethra and our urinary system okay so these are the tips that can be followed to avoid complications that's going to occur with the urinary system and the kidneys so by following out these steps we can have a good and healthy urinary system or else your uh, kidneys right then so we discussed several things related with our lesson part which reflects about the kidney diseases and uh, uh, urinary infections and also infections and diseases related to the urinary system right then now it's time to start our new part of the lesson right okay my dear children now within this part we'll be discussing about the nerve system a fresh topic a fresh system now in the earlier part we discussed about the kidneys and the urinary system so here we are discussing about the nervous system of the human nervous system so here you are given with a figure which a batsman striking the ball right 
So, imagine how a cricketer hits a ball. We know that he coordinates many organs in the body or body parts to hit the ball in the proper way. Mainly he coordinates the eyes, hands, legs and neck to hit the ball properly. If these organs do not coordinate in the proper manner, his hit will not be su successful. So if you take a, a cricketer, especially a batsman, right? Especially a batsman, you know that when a person is going to put the ball, when the bowler is going to put the ball, right? The batsman already know when the ball is coming in the air, batsman already know to which place does the ball is going to hit, right? So by that way, he's going to put the leg and he's going to strike the ball very well. But what will happen if there is a misjudgment, if there is a mistiming, then definitely the batsman will get out, right? We have to, the batsman or the one who is playing cricket, they have a wonderful coordination. They're looking at the ball from the eyes. From eyes, they are looking at the ball, right? Then by using their arms and legs, right? He's going, he or she is going to hit the ball to a different direction. He's going to play a stroke. But my dear children, if the stroke is not successful, definitely the person or the batsman will get out, right? So when playing cricket, when playing cricket, it's important to have a good coordination between these different body parts and different contents in the body, especially different organs in the body like hands, eyes, legs and so on and even the muscles contained within these things, right? It's important to have a good, co good coordination among these organs, right? So my dear children, cricket is a game where all of these organs are going to come in, con come in uh, handy, right? All of these organs are going to help for the batsman or for the player to play that game very well. So for a batsman, when playing cricket, Let's see like how he is going to play the strokes. Okay, my dear children, so you observed that video clip which regards to the batsman's point, point of view. So you, I think you observed how the batsman, batsman, how the batsman is going to play a stroke when he's playing cricket. So you observed if there is a miscalculation, he's going to get out. So my dear children, it's important to have coordination, communication between different organs when you are playing cricket, right? So my dear children, if you take the hitting process or playing process of cricket, it's like this. So think about the which, uh, think about which body organs coordinate when you drive or put a thread to a needle. Two smaller, right, incidents two smaller, very smaller events that we come across in our day-to-day -day life. One is putting a thread to a needle, right? Putting a thread to a needle. 
and the other is also given here what is that driving when a person is driving you know that when a person is driving his legs is going to work his arm is going to work his eyes are going to coordinate and focus on the road right by using the legs he is going to brake and accelerate right or else to change the shifting of gears by using the legs right now when driving upon controlling the steering wheel right we use our arms and we are focusing on the road about the vehicles that's going to come about the about the uh, uh, people who are in the road so like that way the focus in on different areas now we don't need our eyes to focus on our legs because our legs are going to work automatically okay our legs are going to work automatically if you know the place so this is how a driving of a uh, this is how the driving is going to work in here also there are different types of organs which going to help when when a person when a driver is going to drive a car or else any other vehicle now if you take threading a needle in threading a needle also we have to place it like this and we have to take the, uh, the other thread like this then we have to insert it by looking at that hole very gently we can't do it suddenly right i mean like we can't do it very quickly so in these cases my dear children it those cases are also same as the previous one where a cricketer is going to play strokes when the ball is going to come towards him different coordinate different uh, organs are going to help for these people when they are doing different types of work so following for flow chart shows relevant process of hitting the ball now same as like this here a flow chart is given to show the process of hitting the ball let's see how it's going to work first of all the cricketer or whatever the person in here is going to observe the object now let's imagine a driver is going to overtake right a driver who is driving a car he is going to overtake now first of all he is looking at the road like this okay he is focusing on the road like this then after that he is checking whether any vehicle is coming from the front or not if there is no then he is going to turn the wheel like this and to overtake the vehicle but what happens if the if a vehicle is coming towards at him from the opposite side then the person would turn to the other side and come back once again to the lane the correct lane once again the person or the driver will come to right hand side and he is going to check whether the whether any vehicle is coming from the front or not so these information are getting obtained from our eye right these observations are getting obtained from our eye so my dear children first of all he is observing if he, if he is a cricketer he is observing to which position does the ball is going to come he is observing by looking at the arm of the bowler by looking at the angle of the bowler by looking how the bowler is going to release the ball by analyzing these conditions he is going to observe and to decide to which place does the blow ball is going to hit on the pitch so by that a person is going to or the cricketer or the batter is going to place the leg to a certain position and a play a stroke and to play a stroke 
So when threading a needle, the person who has the needle is going to check on the needle, check on the hole, that tiny hole, then he's going to take the thread, then he by looking at these things very carefully is going to insert the thread. Right. So my dear children, in each of these cases, it's important, it's really important to get visual sensors. Visual sensors. We have to get visual sensors in each of these instances. So when a player is cricket, when a player is playing cricket and when, a, when he is going to hit the ball, first and foremost thing is he's going to see the ball by using eyes. After that, the proper coordination among the organs means like he's going to put the leg, then he's going to play the stroke, he's going to move his arms, right? Like that way, he's going to do different motions, different mo movements in the muscles of our body. So by that way, he's going to play the stroke. Then finally, hitting the ball. Then finally, he's going to hit the ball. Right? To a certain or to a different direction. Muscles in the hands, neck and legs is going to help in this process to hit the ball. So each and every incident in our day-to-day -day life, each and every stimulus in our day-to-day -day life, stimulus means change in our environment or change in our environment, stimulus. Like you can say barking of a dog, right? Barking of a dog. If you take barking of a dog, you can hear it from your ears and according to that you are giving a certain response, right? So you can take like this, when you are working on the road, your leg is going to hit on a stone, a stimulus, change in the environment which you can detect. So when you are going to hit your leg on a stone, you are going to scream sometime or else you are going to cry. So that is the response which is given or the reaction which is given according to the certain stimulus. Okay. So like that in this case, the person or the cricketer is going to look at the ball and he is going to coordinate, the, uh, coordinate his organs like the muscle movements, like the arm movements, legs like that is going to coordinate the proper organs, then finally he is going to hit the ball by using each and every muscle in, our, in his arm and the legs and also by using the neck as well when he is looking down, he have to look down to play the stroke. So like that day his neck is also getting down at this time, okay. So neck muscles in the neck also helps. So this is how a normal response is going to work. Response means my dear children here for a certain incident, for a certain stimuli, right or for a certain stimulus, the response given by the person is depending on the coordination process of the person. Okay, right then. So, the nervous system is given once again, okay, the topic. So, according to the above seeing ball is a sense. So, it's a sense. This is also referred as a stimulus or stimuli. So, we are capturing stimuli, stimulus from our sensory organs. Also, these things are called as receptors. It's because that we receive information from the receptors, right? We receive information. So when I'm looking at this, I receive an information that this is a pen. So if I'm going to close my eyes like this, I can't see the pen. So I can't get an information from that case, right? Then our eyes are getting information from the outer environment. 
So my dear children, our eyes are going to receive information from the external environment. So that's why our eyes are referred as receptors, receptors, receiving information. Then our ears, receptors, we receive sound information. Our skin, our skin, we receive sensors related to temperature, touches and so on. Our tongue, taste sensors, our nose, right, then smell sensors. So like that way, there are several sensory organs in our body. These sensory organs helps in receiving information or receiving uh, data. So these are referred as receptors. Okay. So sense. So my dear children, according to the above seeing ball, above seeing the ball, it is a sense. This is also called as a stimuli or else a stimulus. It occurs through the sensory organ called the eye. So how does we capture these stimuli or sense? It's going to occur here basically from eyes, right? The eye is the receptor. So I told you about the receptor. Receptor means here we are receiving information from a certain organ, right? So receptor. Hitting the ball is the reaction. So reaction means that's the action that we provide according to the nature of the sense, right? According to the nature of the stimuli, the reaction. Muscles in the eye, neck, hands and legs are used for this reaction. And for this reaction, for this coordination process, right? To provide a certain reply, to provide a certain reaction, to provide a certain reply, right? To provide a certain reply, my dear children, different types of, okay, different types of organs and uh, different types of systems are going to be involved. These are some examples. So this is how the stimuli or the sense is getting captured. It's getting captured by the receptors. Then according to the reactions that we are going to provide, different types of muscles and organs and systems are going to help in replying for the reaction. Right then. So this is how a re this is how we reply to a certain sense or to a certain stimuli by using a certain reaction in our day-to-day -day life. Okay then. So here you are given many changes occur within the internal body of humans as well as in his surrounding environment. Body should be react for these changes. So our body should react for these changes. Like in the earlier case I told you. Barking of a dog, when you are working on the road, suddenly you are going to hit your leg on a stone. Right? Changes in the environment. So, we have to react for these changes accordingly. Okay? So, to react, there should be very good interaction between the receptors. So, once again, you are with the given with the receptors. Re receptors are the ones or the organs that provide information to the body, data to the body, processing data to the body. So these things are eye, visual sensors, giving visual data, ear, giving sound data or sound sensors, nose, giving smell sensors, then tongue, giving taste sensors. Then skin giving out touches or feeling sensors, right? And the effectors, a new thing my dear children, effector means simply the muscles or the organs that we move during a reaction. 
right? By the, whatever the effect is given for the reaction is going to give out by using those organs. Let's imagine, imagine that I am going to drop this pen down. In that case, I see that pen is going to drop down and I can see that the pen is on the ground. Visual sense. Then after that, I am going to bend my uh, I'm going to bend my body down and by using my arms, I'm going to get the pin once again. So, the command is given from the brain to our muscles and our arms to bend down and get that pin. So, the effect is given out by muscles mainly. So, therefore, these things are referred as effectors. What are muscles and glands? There can be muscles and also glands. Glands, in our, glands can be observed within our body. So, my dear children, this process is known as coordination. So, to react, there should be very good interaction between the organs. So, the interaction between the different organs upon reacting to a certain stimuli or to a certain sense is called as coordination. This is called as coordination. There are two main types of coordination in our body. So, my dear children, there are two types of coordination in our body. We can divide this coordination process, communication or the interaction between different organs, different effectors in our body or different uh, receptors, different effectors in our body. We can divide those combinations or we can divide those interactions into two main parts. So, the two main parts are given. Number one, the nervous and hormones are very important in coordination. Coordinating and controlling various functions of our body by the nervous system. So, by the nervous system, there are some coordinations which is going to occur. Like in the previous case, when a person is hitting, when the player is hitting the ball, he is going to analyze all the data and his brain is going to help to process that data. And whatever the reaction that he should supply is given as an impulse through the nerves towards the arms and legs in order to play a certain stroke. So, my dear children, that whole process is occurring with the help of the nervous system. If there is no nervous system within the body, then that player can't communicate between different organs within the same time. His brain is giving out a signal, but there is no way of transmitting the signal towards the muscles or whatever the organs. So, my dear children, our nervous system is going to help when coordinating or when communicating between the organs in our body. Okay, so that coordination is referred as the nervous coordination, right? Coordination that occur within our nervous system is referred as the nervous coordination, right? Next one, number two, coordinating the body organs by hormones. There are different types of hormones in our body. If you take our blood glucose level, normal blood glucose level in a healthy person is 75 to 115, right? 75 to 115 milligrams per 100 milliliter, okay, milligrams. So, when this blood sugar level is going to rise or fall, complications may occur. So, in order to control the blood glucose level in that same 75 to 115 level, we have hormones. If the blood sugar level is going to rise, 
there is a hormone called insulin within our blood. Actually, it's getting secreted into blood by the organ called pancreas. Pancreas is going to secrete insulin hormone. So, upon uh, secreting insulin hormone, blood glucose will level will once again come back to original state between 75 to 115. Upon eating food, when you are eating food, you know that glucose is getting collected within our body or within our blood. If there is high amount of glucose, then it is not good for our body. So, in that case, our pancreas is going to secrete a certain hormone which is referred as insulin. So, that insulin hormone can reduce the blood sugar level up to optimum level. So, that control, that controlling system or that coordination system which helps to control like blood, blood glucose level and there are like different levels in our body which is between controlled by or which is controlled by hormones. Even our growth is getting controlled by hormones, right? Our growth is controlled by the hormone called growth hormone. If you check the uh, calcium level in our body, right? That calcium level is controlled by a hormone called calcitonin and uh, if you take metabolic activities, the rate of metabolic activities or rate of biological processes that's going to occur within our body is getting controlled by a hormone called thyroxine, which is getting, con which is getting uh, created within the gland called thyroid gland, right? So like that, there are different types of hormones contained within our body. Those hormones are also going to contribute in control different types of coordination processes. So my dear children, the coordination processes or the communication processes which is going to, uh, which is going to happen with the participation of a hormone is referred as what? This is called as endocrine, endocrine coordination. This is called as endocrine coordination. So the, the coordination or the communication between different organs, it's going to categorize or we can categorize these things into two main groups. Number one, the nerves and hormones. So you, we know that nerves and hormones are important. So coordinating and controlling various functions of our body by the nervous system. So coordinating and controlling functions in our body by the nervous system is called the nervous coordination. Normally, most of the times when you are doing different types of actions, when you are doing different types of works, nervous coordination is going to happen. Nervous coordination is one is the one which is going to help when you are moving your arms and legs here and there in responding to a certain type of a stimuli. Okay. Nervous coordination. Then in the second one, hormonal coordination, right? This is referred as the endocrine, endocrine coordination. So endocrine coordination means, my dear children, there are different communications which is going to occur within our body with the presence of a hormone. Like in the earlier case, which I have explained, in order to reduce the blood glucose level, there is a hormone called insulin hormone. In order to grow our muscles and in order to grow our body, in order to grow our organs, there is a hormone called growth hormone. Growth hormone helps in growing tissues and bones and other body parts. Like that way, there are different types of hormones which is going to communicate and coordinate works within our body. So my dear children, second one is the coordinating the body organs by hormones. By hormones, body organs are getting coordinated or communicated. So the coordination carried out by the hormones is known as endocrine coordination. So these are the two main coordinations that we can observe within our body. Nervous coordination, Endocrine coordination. Nervous coordination means with the help of the nerves, body and the organs are getting 
or it's getting controlled or else getting coordinated right second one endocrine uh, endocrine uh, coordination means coordinated coordination of different organs these are the two main types of coordinations that we can observe right my dear children so we studied several things related with the nervous system within this part so in the next part also we'll be discussing some further things related with our lesson okay so we studied about the endocrine uh, endocrine coordination and we studied about the nervous coordination so we'll discuss further things related with the coordination process and about our nervous system within our next chapter